And Gould was not a Christian man. And he says the fossil record supports is a massive change over short periods of time. Oh. And then it's just steady. And so if you look at 2% of the DNA, we look 98% the same as a chimpanzee. But if you look at the massive amounts of DNA, we're very different. College students ask Dr. James Tour about some different things about evolution and the age of the earth. It's absolutely fascinating. So let's get right into it. Thank you so much for the um, talk. Um, I just wanted to ask you, like, as a scientist, what's your um, what's your um, stance on like the theory of evolution, and also as a Christian? Mm -hmm. um, many Christians believe like the Earth is six thousand years old, but like mm -hmm. with carbon dating and like with all of that, like, yeah. I just wanted to know your perspective as a scientist. Well, you, you know, I I could be sympathetic to why they would believe that the Earth is six thousand years old because they're tracking. They're tracking the lifetimes of people back. And if the creation happened in six 24-hour days, then they, they track that back and they say that the good approximation is the lifetimes of people. So I can see how they can get that. We know our universe is expanding. All right, The Bible doesn't say it's not. We know it's expanding because we can see the red shifts and, and so it, it's expanding from more origin point. A day at the beginning of the expansion versus a day now is very different because we're expanding out. So, mm. so the, the time frame of a day is, is very different. So in other words, if we look back in time, we can look back in time, track that back in the expansion of the universe, you can see that, that what looks looked like a very short time period to them, looks like a very long time period to us because there's something called the theory of relativity. Where you are in the expansion of the universe affects how you view time. All right? And Interesting. So he's saying that days were longer than or shorter than? I am I catching the drift? Or am I completely going crazy? Let me know. So, so um... And then if you look between Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, there seems to have been a gap. And that gap yep. doesn't define for us any amount of time that there could have been that gap. And so there's an open question as to how long that gap is. But if you were to go to six 24-hour days in our reckoning of 24 hours, I can see how they can get that. But as far as the age of the universe, you don't have to get that and still be consistent with the Bible because there is a gap at Genesis chapter 1, at Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. There's a gap. You can't say 100% the Bible says that it's 6,000 years old, okay? You can't say that. You have to do lots of tricky work just to even get there by counting all the way back and thinking that the Bible means literal days. You also have to think that the Bible has to, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay, how long was that? The earth was formless and void. Right, and we also know that we, are, we have an expanding universe, and that's why tomorrow will be a slightly longer day than it is today, because we will have expanded out in our universe. Really? Uh, uh, as far as the theory of evolution, it is a theory. We certainly see microevolution, small changes. We see it all the time in my own lab. We work a lot with bacteria. And you see small perturbations in, in, in DNA. And, and you, have, you, you have epigenetics where there's external things that causes changes in us. You know, every time we get, we get a new virus, it can change our DNA. And that, that gets passed on to our children. So we see small changes. In my lab, every time we had a virus cell, it, it remains, every time we had a bacterial cell, it remains as a bacterium. Uh, every time we had a mouse, it remained as a mouse. Uh, um, I think there's a big extrapolation to, to having gross changes in organisms. Bo body plan changes are much harder for me to understand the chemical changes that come about. So what I do is I, I ask my biochemist friends, explain to me how you get massive body plan changes through the theory of evolution. And they will say one small change at a time. I say, okay, now let's get rid of the just so stories and explain to me the chemistry on how that can begin to take place. And none of them will answer me. One small change at a time. Well, where are these changes happening, guys? Come out, get it together. No answer is an answer in myself. 
in itself. Uh, just just about two weeks ago on my YouTube channel, I interviewed a guy named uh, Rob Statler, and he is a he's a biomedical uh, engineer, uh, graduated from both MIT and Harvard. He talks about the tree of life. The tree of life is, remember, this, this Darwinian tree of life. You come from a single cell and you get simple organisms and then it goes higher, higher, higher up. You get all these branches and, and you get the diversity of life that you have today. That's the tree of life. He talks about the shrubbery of life. If you just look at the top part, cut away all the bottom, the top part is exactly what, what the book of Genesis lays out. You get kinds coming up, kinds coming up. Oh. And he talks about the credibility of the science that goes on when you're talking about a macro evolution that's taking place. So watch that video by someone who knows a lot more about this than I do, and it give you a different perspective. The other thing is this. Many things we have in science, we interpret differently over time. Science changes every decade. There's big changes. In the 1950s, most scientists believed that we... There, universe has always been steady state approximation they didn't they thought the bible was nonsense saying that, that the universe had a beginning and then with the recording of microwave background radiation in 1964 there was a switch prior to that the bible had it right all along again what do you have to say about that skeptics what do you have to say about that haters in the 1940s 1950s believed that the universe has always been after 1964, most scientists, yes, the universe had a beginning. It had a beginning. And so science dramatically changed at that time. Changes all the time. Uh, uh, in 1972, Gould comes out and he says, the fossil record does not support gradual changes over time like what Darwin spoke about. And Gould was not a Christian man. And he says, what the fossil record supports is a massive change over short periods of time. Oof. And then it's just steady. Oh. Oof! 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 <laughs> Sorry. Sheesh! All the people, oh no, he's doing the sheesh thing again. It's a change over short periods of time, and then it's steady. That's what the fossil record shows. So, 1972, it changed. 1980, it changed. Alvarez hypothesis comes in. We no longer think that dinosaurs died because of climate change. They died because a meteorite hit the Yucatan Peninsula and spread dirt into the air. And that killed off the plants. And the plants, and then the herbivores died. So the carnivores died. That's what wiped out the dinosaurs. Science changed in 1980. Uh, junk DNA, junk, junk DNA that, that what I grew up on, they were 98% the same as a chimpanzee. And, and all that other DNA is, that's just junk DNA. That's no longer <laughs> called junk DNA. That is now called intergenic DNA. It may not be protein coding but what it is is regulatory it is the traffic cops that turn on what goes on what goes off and there we are massively different than the chimpanzee yeah that's hilarious i remember oh that that's our distant cousin hello hello say hi to your cousin but we're massively different shout out to dr james tour for giving me some uh, good reasons and so if you look at 2% of the DNA, we look 98% the same as a chimpanzee. But if you look at the massive amounts of DNA, we're very different. And Dang. so science changes. What I'm saying is the interpretation of science changes all the time and it's put forth as fact and science changes all the time, certainly on the order of decades. Along with that, Bible interpretation changes for all individuals. When I read the Bible today, I view it differently than I did 30 years ago, when I read the same passages, I, because I've read more, I've considered different things and, and, and consider the way other people have viewed things. Mm -hmm. and, and so sometimes we interpret the Bible wrongly. Sometimes we interpret science wrongly. So things are changing all the time. So, so in my mind, it's, there, you, you know, uh, um, uh, nothing bothers me. <laughs> nothing bothers me. Wow. Great answer. I love that. He did great going around about saying, well, we'll do whatever. I mean, I can see where you get that if you count up the days. It makes sense. Like, I can see how someone gets that. But is that necessarily true? Essentially, he's saying I don't. he doesn't see the proof for that. Absolutely amazing. So, guys, 
know that we can trust in God. Know that he is good and worthy of praise. I encourage you to do that today. It will be the best decision you guys could ever make. In the description below, you'll be able to click a link to help you to decide to follow Jesus for the first time. And also, guys, consider subscribing if you haven't. I'm trying to hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I know we could do it with your help. So thank you for all the love and support. It means the world.